Hey guys, this is our long-term defender. And as we've proved in the last video we did, it's actually really good off-road. Good enough to keep up with a Wrangler most of the time. But what if you want something better? What if you want something that will not only keep up with a Wrangler, but will exceed it off-road? Well, then you gotta get yourself one of these. I'm calling it the Defender Vader. Steve calls it Big Bertha, and Steve is my friend from Land Rover of Denver. And he built this Defender to take on things like, well, Chinaman Gulch here in Colorado. And in this video, I'm gonna to talk to Steve and we're gonna go over everything that's been done to this ultimate Defender to make it as off-road worthy as anything you'll ever see on the trail. So Steve is the uh, VPGM of Land Rover of Denver and he built the Defender Vader, or Big Bertha as you call it. That's right. Uh, so Steve, first of all, tell me about why you decided to go big or go home. Well, we knew this vehicle's so capable right out of the box yeah. and obviously you guys have already shown it and we've, we've done a couple videos too on it. But we wanted to take it up to the next level so uh, we've, we've come with this build and, and we're on 35 inch tires with uh, about a four inch lift before you put it in off-road mode, which adds another about an inch and a half. And so how much total ground clearance do you have? Uh, we've added a good four inches of ground, ground clearance. clearance to stock, yeah. I interrupt this video for this week's TFL Bids bargain. We have many cool off-road SUVs and trucks for sale at tflbids.com. This week, we have a real gem. It's a 1978 Toyota Land Cruiser FJ40. It has a clean title. It's a no reserve auction. It has relatively low miles, a manual transmission. It has a few modifications, but a very cool color combination, and it has a winch. So check it out at tflbits.com using the link below. And don't forget, you can submit your own truck or SUV for sale at TFL Bids. Just use the link right there and actually sell your vehicle to a like-minded enthusiast. All right, yeah. so uh, let's go through it and starting at the front. Uh, so at the front, I noticed that you've got the recovery hook exposed, right? Correct. So that helps you actually get out of sticky situations and probably mm -hmm. gives you a little bit more approach angle, I would yeah, think. You get absolutely. rid of that little plastic plate. Uh, and then it gets really interesting, right? So how do you lift a vehicle with air suspension? So this particular one, we got a lift from J Austin Fabrications uh, through new Defender Mods out of Australia. And it's a two inch subframe lift. So you're basically taking the subframe and lifting the body from there. And so it's like a little puck. It's a puck. Yeah. And there's a subframe in the front and in the rear. So that gives us two inches. And then we also did two inch lift rods from Lucky 8 Off-Road to give us four inches in the standard ride height. But as you know, when you, when you go into off-road or uh, rock crawl mode, you get another about an inch and a half on top of that. So that kind of solves the issue of getting it taller, but it doesn't solve the issue of getting 35s on there, right? Because now you're putting wider yeah. and bigger tires. So how did you go and fit those bad boys <clears throat> Well, we had to do a little bit of trimming. Yeah, let's uh, go over here, yeah. We had to do a little bit of trimming here, and then in the inner fender liner, uh, we had to relocate the the coolers uh, up and forward in in to just to give us some more clearance. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Because obviously, you're not going to put those big tires on, then you know, be able to turn it without mm -hmm. rubbing. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, you also did more than that, right? You also beefed up the exhaust. So we'll start in a second, but what did you do to the exhaust? Yeah, so there's a second muffler in the rear with uh, exhaust pipes, but we had a clearance issue once we did the subframe lift. So we decided to take that second silencer completely off. So okay. it's got a little bit more uh, so it's, like a, it's like a cat back straight pipe. Kind of, yeah. So kind of, yeah. sort of, yeah. 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 All right. And then, of course, putting on these wheels, you ran into brake issues. So what did you do to get the brakes under there? <clears throat> yeah, so on a, this is a P400, so yep. it's a six-cylinder, 400 horsepower. You cannot put an 18-inch rim on uh, on these calipers. And that's why when our first one came, we wanted the big steelies for the, yeah. for the you know, the, 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 the four-cylinder turbo. Yeah, it, it, you, you want more tire when you're off-road right. and in the rocks, certainly here in the Rocky Mountains. So 
Uh, Lucky 8 Off-Road has a, a conversion kit that allows you to put a, a rest of world caliper on the back and then downsize the rim so that gives us more sidewall and when you air down it just makes the ride better and it gives you a lot better grip all right and so now you know you're rolling on bigger tires you're you know rolling more into the wind because you're taller um how's it on power right we've got the six cylinder straight six hybrid which puts out if i believe what 396 about 400 horsepower mm -hmm. how does it do with the bigger wheels and tires well you know b being a mild hybrid uh plus uh the the forced induction yeah. uh it, it you've got 400 horsepower climbs the hill at 90 miles an hour of course i've never done that okay <laughs> <laughs> And the cool thing about the Defender, which is kind of crazy, is uh, depending on how you configure it, it's got huge amounts of payload, right? Yeah. So I think it's up to almost 1,900 pounds. It I think ours is like 13, 1,400. But anyway, you're kind of in full-size truck territory. Right. Uh, An 8,200-pound tow capacity. Yeah. So I've pulled our boat's uh, 7,800 pounds, and, and it'll 80 miles an hour up. Eisenhower Tunnel. Even, even with that, even with that setup. I haven't with these tires yeah. yet, so okay. that would be at the 33. All right, all right. And then uh, this last weekend, you took it on its. Is it? I think it, it's inaugural wheeling trip, right? You took uh -huh. it to China, China, Chinaman Gulch, Gulch which, yeah. which is for all of you that are watching this aren't familiar with Colorado. I would say it's one of the harder trails. Yeah, it's a solid seven out of ten yeah. trail. A lot of really big uh, uh, rock obstacles in the trail, and then there's three major obstacles to get up. And, and uh, we had run one of the first fifty, the first editions when they first hit the United States. I think within three days yeah, of arriving you, to yeah. the states, and we filmed that. And that particular unit didn't have a rear locker, and we've got we got that one through there on a on a 32, 33 inch tire. So how did this one compare? Oh, this one just marched right up. Yeah. It walked right through it. Yeah, it was fantastic. So 35-inch tires is a big game changer, especially here in the Rockies. I mean, it, it, it makes a big difference. All right, and of course, the question everybody's curious about, how much does this cost? If you have a Defender and you want to go, you know, big, how much? Yeah, so we added uh, the roof rack, some decals on the hood, uh, matte black to give it kind of the X look. Uh, defender Vader, wheels, see, the, yeah, the defender, defender Vader, Vader yeah. and uh, sliders. We have those on here as well. Uh, plus tires, plus the lift, plus the labor. You know, you're in that fourteen, fifteen thousand dollar range. Which you know, which when you think about it in Jeep terms, is not that much, right? Uh, many Jeep guys will spend that easily on lifting their Wranglers or whatever Jeep you happen yeah, to have. Yeah, very quickly. Very quickly, and that's not mentioning it. You know, even touching the engine. How about uh, skid plates? Are the stock ones okay? Are they good enough? They're good. We'd like to see. Uh, we're talking to some aftermarket vendors on trying to develop some skid plates, especially for the gas tank, and then maybe some sliders for the rear control arms, but. But the Lucky 8 sliders that we have on here are fantastic. They allow you to ride over a rock and, and use that uh, to just basically slide over the rock. It makes a big difference. So ask and figure how much would this cost if somebody wanted one of these. And can they buy it? Are you guys selling these? Uh, we, well, this one will be for sale after the end it's, of the summer. It's, 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 it's yours, right? Yeah, we've got to film it all summer. <laughs> yeah. But uh, um, you're in that hundred to $105,000 range, just depending on how it's equipped in a... In a P400. Yeah, so I guess, I guess it depends, right? If you're looking at it from like a Wrangler point of view, it's expensive. But if you're looking at it from a G-Wagon point of view, it's a bargain. Oh, it's a bargain. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and we have a we have a V8 coming on order this fall, and that one we will probably do a little bit more lift and try to put 37s under that one. So when you were wheeling it, uh, what surprised you the most about it? I mean, you know, the thing about the look. Here's the thing about the Jeep, right? The the, the thing about the Jeep is, you know, any part that you can uh, either hit or scrape is pretty much easily replaceable right what keeps me from being really confident off-road in the defender is you know this stuff gets expensive yeah. right when, when you hit a, that it's going to get expensive you gotta take it to a body shop was sure. that was that worrying you does this kind of so solve that problem well i've been wheeling my whole life yeah. so uh yes and no it's just part of the part of the sport so you know you're going to skin a few things up but uh everything's replaceable the lower uh, bumper panels all come off and you can replace those pretty easily uh, rim faces, you know, we're, we're going to try to go with a deeper dish rim on the next build. I saw so you, that, you just scratched up one, yeah, of, the, yeah, yeah. one of the wheels a little bit. Yeah, try to do that and, and, and push the tire out just a little bit. Did they, uh, they make uh, true beadlocks? Can you get... We're, we have some in development. Yeah. Okay, all right, I figured. I, you <laughs> so figure we're it. working on that. that. That's where you're going to go. And how about on-road ride? How, is it compromised or is it still good? <clears throat> no, with the subframe lift, you retain the original... Um, dynamics and driving of yeah, completely stopped. You mess with the angles of the drive shaft, yeah, so those you are all factory. cannot feel it at all. 
I, I think on the next uh, build, we'll probably go with a three inch uh, subframe lift and then a one or a one and a half inch um, uh, rod uh, rods. Yeah. 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 So yeah, that'll give us a little more down travel and, and give us a little bit more clearance on the bottom. So for all of you who are confused by, well, you, there's the, the, I guess Johnson rods used to be the original ones, but now there's different companies that make them, right? Correct. Yeah. So these th are Lucky 8. Yeah, Lucky 8. So they're these little, like, I think they're plastic or some kind of composite material. Mm -hmm. And they're basically these little rods that, that tell the computer the, the height that the vehicle should be at. And when you change them out, you're basically faking the computer out into thinking it's at a different height than it is and so that when you turn it on the computer says oh the vehicle's too low and so it raises it automatically so you're always at kind of that that more upright mm -hmm. you know on your tippy toes height versus the I, I don't know what that does long term i mean you know if you're gonna but look all air suspension is gonna fail at some point <laughs> it is right it just happens i mean 10 years usually is the life of any air suspension the compressors go so you know it's and spring sag and spring sag yeah it's like yeah, it's <laughs> so, true yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> Uh, so, you know, it is it is what it is, yeah. uh, but it's certainly a lot cheaper because those little rods are like a hundred bucks. Yeah, 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 you're a pretty quick swap and they're, and they're uh, You can do swap. it in your garage. Yeah, yeah, it's um, not, you don't have to be very technical. We're, we're really using two different lifts to get our combined height in standard height of four inches. How about, how about so. those pucks you used? Are those a little bit more complicated? You have to like- A lot of engineering went into those. Yeah, so, I bet. Yeah, Jay, Jay Austin Fabrication's been working on that for a while, so. And, and there's some others in development out there as well. All right, I'm going to ask you my uh, softball question. Now, what's your favorite thing that you did to this? Because oftentimes, let's face it, I've, you know, 10 years, we've done a lot of lifts. And at some point, there's always something that, that you don't like. But what's your favorite part of this? I love oh, the look, I, by the way. I'd have to go with the 35. Yeah, it's a game changer for the vehicle. Uh, a lot more clearance, a lot more. Uh, when, when you air down, you've just got a, a lot nicer off-road drivability. And it's more comfortable and better traction. Obviously, the Land Rover community and the Jeep community, there's some, you know, there's some crossover now. We're going to have a Bronco community. Are people excited by this when they see it? What, what's their reaction? Oh, yeah. Yeah. So we posted some pictures again today uh, of the build, and uh, we actually, we, we took three orders today. So oh, congratulations. <laughs> yeah, so, wow. Uh, but it was Motor Trend uh, SUV of the year, yep. which, is, which is great and exciting. And, and for me, it's just, it's just fun to, to have something else out there other than just Jeep and Look forward to the Bronco too.